What's happening everyone, Tom Goring here and welcome back to episode 2 of the F1 23 Road to Glory, Has to Glory, whatever you want to call it, Driver Career Mode series. Today we are here for the return episode, episode 2 in Jeddah. It's a Saudi Arabian Grand Prix and a track that I actually really like in real life. Right, before we get started with episode 2, a massive thank you on the support of the first episode and... It's crazy. We've literally just gained around about 15 subscribers and the video already has over like over 700 views and over 25 likes and the video hasn't even been out for two days yet. So massive thank you for the support and yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about this game. Let's keep the support going and if you're returning from episode one, thanks for watching. And uh, make sure you uh, hit the like button and also subscribe. We've just passed 600 subs and now we're going to try and aim for 700 as we try to capitalize on this game. So we begin this episode with literally some um, questions about Formula 1, about petrol heads and Formula 1 going to um, you know, electric motors and stuff. And now we come to the upgrades. And as you can see, we have our first upgrades of this series. So, we literally did two upgrades in the last video, and we literally um, had both of them fail on us before the first race. And now, both of them are now on the car, ready to go for this Grand Prix. So, that's a good start to this Haas career mode series. So, the pecking order, Alpine have jumped us, and as you can see, the front wing adjuster bracket, that has also been on the car. So, we've got our first two upgrades coming on the car, and yeah, it's a good feeling. But, as you can see, Alpine have literally jumped us as we head in towards uh, the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix circuit. And as you can see also, it's very tight as well, but there's the performance chart. Red Bull, as predicted, are miles ahead of everyone else, of Ferrari, Mercedes, and Alpine. And there is confirmation that the front wing adjuster bracket is on the car, along with the uh, floor upgrade as well. The next upgrade we're going to do is a secondary wing flaps upgrade, which will improve the front downforce on the car. Um, we, we, ha we kind of have a lot of um, resource points going in uh, to this race, but we obviously can't do anything with those resource points because our current upgrades are not really fitted onto the car. So, as we advance into the timeline, we get our weekly uh, resources, and we're going to try and we're just see what we can do with uh, this car. And now we get to the Pirelli hot laps. I don't know why supercars are still in this game. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of everyone's time, and I don't really care to drive a goddamn supercar in an F1 game. So, without further ado, it's time to get this episode of F1 23 Drive Career Mode on the way. Are you ready? Because I am. It's Saudi Arabian Grand Prix live from Jeddah. And hopefully, let's score some points. Let's get in to the qualifying. So surprisingly, I didn't really feel the need to practice that much like I did with the last episode. I think it's just because considering that I've literally just done a Saudi Arabia uh, league race on this game, um, on F122, literally um, days, um, well, literally last week. So I just felt like I can just literally come on here and just just get the laps in automatically. Um, I literally did uh, most of the practice uh, programs on quick practice, and the only ones that I really did was qualifying pace and also uh, the race strategy as well. But apart from that, um, Saudi Arabia actually has changed a little bit as far as the curbs and stuff and the apexes. It's a little bit more tighter now and the walls a little bit more closer, and they've actually made the adjustments that they have in real life. So we're going to get out for our second qualifying session of our career. We're currently 1-0 against Kevin Magnussen in this career mode and now we come to Saudi Arabia and hopefully we don't do a Mick Schumacher and bin it into the wall to the point where we have to uh, start in a low position. Um, I really like this track, I think um, there's a lot of uh, good uh, corners, a lot of uh, you know high speed corners in this track and if you get a lap right it just feels so good and you, and you do feel satisfaction just getting a good lap in on the board. So this is the one and only lap that we're going to get into for this qualifying session and you'll see uh, later on why that is so literally 15 minutes left and we have the track all to ourselves first corner 100 meters very difficult to try and get the corners right this chicane right and you want to just try and be patient with the throttle as you exit free and you go in towards the high speed sections of turn four notice how there's no gap 
on the entry of that corner and now literally the the walls are now really narrow now as I nearly crash literally into that wall holding sixth gear and yeah for for a first lap a first quality lap around here it's actually not been that bad as we enter literally the end of sector one coming into the the, the slight banking of the left hander piastri set to one minute 29.385 so that's pretty much the lap time that we have to beat so um, coming in towards the end of um, this sector and as you can see the curbs the curbs were a problem um, on this track and you'll see why in this video why the curbs on this game are a killer on this track and I don't think it's because it's like a track like issue I just think it's just a setup issue where the setup that I'm running has too low ride height um, and I still haven't really understood the, the whole setups on this game I keep thinking that you know, the setups in this game are kind of similar towards last year. Um, but this is the first time that I've actually tried to tweak the setup just a little bit when it comes to the suspension, suspension geometry, and also the wing adjustments as well. But coming across the line, we do a 1 minute 29 flat, which makes us quicker than Oscar Piastri and also Pierre Gasly. And we are currently in fourth place. And as we can see, we are literally in P8 and we're quicker than Esmer Ocon, Lance Stroll, and also Lando Norris with just under eight minutes to go. So it, it's looking good. And obviously with track evolution, we can easily gain another, what, three times. But look at Sergio Perez. Look at the gap between him and then obviously Russell Verstappen as well. Verstappen's just slightly ahead of us. So Verstappen hasn't had a good lap. So coming in towards the last minute of qualifying, and we're going to try and get one last lap on the board. We are the last uh, car to enter the circuit. And hopefully we should benefit the most from the track conditions. So, starting the lap here, entering turn one, we're gonna try and break as slightly as we can, but as you can see, we literally have a DRS failure, or a DRS fault, and as you can see, the lap is gone. And as you can see, the DRS is open, and there's no way I can get through this, this track with an open DRS, especially in sector one. So, unfortunately, just like that, our lap was ruined. To the point where we couldn't really um, do anything anymore. And uh, as you can see, uh, time has run out, unfortunately. And that is a very disappointing P12. Uh, that, that's, that's, that's heartbreaking. I mean, if, if we would have got one more lap in, we could have really challenged Ocon and Norris for P8 to P7. Um, you don't like to see it. Uh, P12, but you know what? Let's forget about it. It's time for the race. We're here today on the shores of the Red Sea in the lower Hejaz Mountains to visit one of the newest circuits in the Formula One calendar, Jeddah, home to what we all hope is going to be a thrilling Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. So let's take a look at a topographical map of the Jeddah Street circuit. As you can see, a number of challenging corners for the drivers to master here. We'll see just how much the teams have benefited from their time spent in practice this weekend. And like many street circuits, this track has the potential to punish drivers that get it wrong. Let's hope we avoid any safety cars today. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. It's Sergio Perez on pole today. A very happy Carlos Sainz will start second. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Russell, Hamilton, Ocon, Leclerc, Fernando Alonso, Stroll, Gasly, Thomas, Oscar Piastri, Magnussen, Sonoda, Albert, Norris, Joe, De Vries, Sargent, and Valtteri Bottas begins the race from the back of the grid. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. And Anthony Davidson joins us for this one. And great to have your company. There's no weather to worry about here. What will be going through the drivers' minds as they finish these last minute preparations? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into turn one. A bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It will keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. All right, it's showtime for this F123 Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. And we're actually in P11 because Lando Norris, as you saw, literally took a grid penalty. And yeah, that's actually benefited us the most. 
So what we're going to do is we're running uh, lower wings than the default setup. We're going to uh, adjust the uh, rear wing by one, and we're going to pretty much mess with the uh, roll bar. Uh, actually, yeah, make um, two clicks forward on the roll bar, and just I think now we're not going to change the uh, ride height, but we are going to uh, slightly decrease the tire pressures around here. It's simple one stop um, around uh, Saudi Arabia, but as far as like the actual. Um, as far as the actual setup is concerned, um, we don't know as far as the, the strategy is concerned. But as you can see, all of the AI are either starting on mediums or softs. So I think no matter what in this year's game, I think it's either going to be a soft to medium or medium to soft. Um, but I'll need to mess with that in the next couple of races. But as you can see, Perez, Leclerc, uh, 9 out of the 20 drivers are literally on the medium tyres. Um, so that's a very interesting strategy. So as we get ready for this race, we don't really know what strategy is the way to go around here. As you can see, Perez, Sainz, Leclerc, Gasly, myself, Magnussen, Sonoda, uh, Grand Yu Zhou and Bottas are all starting on mediums. So that's kind of interesting. And I don't know what the, uh, what the strategy is and how long the softs or how long the mediums. But as you can see, the predicted strategy, two stops for mediums for softs to mediums or well, the one stop for mediums to hards so it's it's a very uncertain uh, race this this track is and um, with these uh, with these tires now so i'm guessing that the the typical strategy doesn't really work like it did on f122 and i think you can go a little bit more softer on this year's game but here we go the anticipation is building it's the second race of this F123 driver career mode. The Has to Glory returns, it continues here, and it's getting ready for five red lights. Lights out, away we go for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Lance Stroll has had a great start, Leclerc hasn't, and we've absolutely mugged off Charles Leclerc as we enter towards turn one. We don't want to take too much damage. We've been hit, we've been hitting towards turn one. I think Gasly hit us in towards turn two, and we've actually got no damage, and that was very lucky there. And as you can see, Oscar Piastri tries to go down the inside, we're going to take the racing line, and we retain P9 in this race. But that was actually quite lucky how we didn't um, we didn't manage uh, to get uh, floor damage uh, from that start there. I think it must have been three wide between me, Leclerc, and also Geisley. I checked with the radio engineer to see if I had any damage on the floor or any sidepod damage, and we don't have any damage. So, coming in towards the end of lap one, and on towards lap two, and we're literally eight temps ahead of Pierre Gasly as the clerk and uh, makes that his uh, position in this race. And now, on the end of lap two, he's now all over us. And look, man, let's be honest. Charles Leclerc, we're not racing Leclerc in this race. We're, 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 we're racing our own race, and Leclerc is trying to battle for the podium. So we're going to let him go, and hopefully uh, Leclerc can try and uh, battle uh, Lance Stroll and that little uh, train ahead and hopefully maybe give us the arrest but as you can see um we are literally 2.5 seconds ahead of um oscar piastri and we're slowly building the gap and plus piastri is on the soft so his tires are starting to die in this race speaking about dying am i tony hawk or something because i've just literally ride that cab like like i was tony hawk right there and again and that's what i've been talking about literally with the setup because of my ride height i didn't like know that you know the cabs are more lethal in this year's game when it comes to you know riding them and, and just you know riding them with the ride height and stuff um <laughs> but i think one of the main features for this uh, is track again as we literally ride that death cab and that that cab was a pain in the ass all race long and just it wasn't just the fact i was going wide or something i was taking the normal line and it was just like i just rode it like twice so, I honestly think one of the biggest features of this setup when it comes to this track will be the ride height. I think you might have to increase it to, I think, maybe 38, 39, or even 40, maybe, in a way. And as you can see, Fernando Alonso, Fernando Alonso has literally got a gearbox failure, and that is him out of this race of the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. And I don't know what the hell he was doing. He literally had the chance to literally pull up on the end of turn one, but he decided um, he didn't want to do that, and he just literally has blocked me. Um, this first half of this race was quite lonely and quite boring. Um, I was literally uh, faster than the cars behind 
and I was slow and then cars ahead and I was literally in no man's land. So, on lap number 12, Verstappen puts in the fast lap of the race. We're now going to come in for a one and only stop. We're going to go from the mediums to the hards and I might have actually, you know, been off this strategy in the next video. And as you can see, round about now, we literally turn in but... My pit button is the same button as my replay button, so I'm going to have to um, do some altercations to uh, to change that. 2.3 seconds stops, but as you can see, Lando Norris, um, Yuki Tsunoda, well, Yuki Pitts, Piastri tries to get past, he's in the battle with Albon, and Lando Norris is actually jumped us in the box, and I didn't actually realise it at this moment in time, but we've actually lost um, a position to Lando Norris, as you can see. And the only drivers left to box in this race are really Guangzhou Zhou and also uh, Kevin Magnussen as well. But Lando has actually jumped us with Lance Stroll as well. So that's actually quite annoying and it just shows that we need to work on this car when it comes to race pace. Because we're still, we're still slow when it comes to race pace. So 11 laps to go of this Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. And as you can see, Oscar Piastri is not done with us after our fights in the previous episode he tried to send it around the outside in towards the first corner and that didn't work and obviously with Oscar Piastri since he's on now the best tyres he now has the grip advantage but I have to tell you that McLaren is so slow in a straight line it's a joke you know how slow that McLaren is and really you know we do have the advantage when it comes to straight line speed but when it comes to aerodynamic grip and just mechanical grip we, like they just like just shit all over us when it comes to just grip and downforce and that's the one thing that we need I think if we can you know just like try and generate the balance between chassis upgrades and aerodynamic upgrades to the point where we get an even match of you know downforce and also weight you know weight reduction and weight rear distribution then we might be in a good position by the end of the season anyway speaking of good positions we are still in P10 Oscar, you know, PA Street, you know, literally tried to send it around the outside again, but he literally failed. And um, so, this race was all about defending, and as you can see, Albon has overtaken Piastri, and Piastri is going to overtake us. It's going to be free wide in towards the final corner. <laughs> oh, you know what? I have to be honest. As soon as I literally saw that in real in real time when I was actually doing this race, I actually kind of marked out a little bit because that's actually really a really good overtake. And we're actually going to do it again. And it's going to be a Belgium 2000 type style overtake between me and Albon and Piastri. We're literally recreating Schumacher and Hakkinen in F123 with myself and Alex Albon. Now Albon is now all over us. He tries to make the overtake. We make a little bit of contact and we somehow, someway retain the position in this race. And I don't know how we're doing it. I mean, literally, Piastri and Albon have the arrest. And it's all about positioning around this track. So, as you can see, once again, Piastri is on the... Uh, is in on the... Uh, what am I trying to say? This race is chaotic. Piastri is on the inside. Albon is on the outside. And it's free wide once again. As we end towards the start of lap 21. At the end of this Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. And once again, we just literally get the DRS. And we re-overtake Os Oscar Piastri. And what we're trying to do in this race... I'm trying to be very tactical. With, with how I use my ERS. And as you can see, I nearly have 70% of ERS and I literally decided to use it during the last three laps and now we've built a 2.7 lead over Piastri and it looks like we can't do anything wrong as long as we don't do a max Verstappen and we don't crash in the final corner. Do we hit the wall? No, we don't. And that is going to be a points finish in our second ever race. It's P10, hard fought but well earned here in Saudi Arabia. And that's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi. And that brings the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix to a close then, as we reflect on the team's impressive performance today. What do you think it was, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition today? Well, they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease.
Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today, and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sport that you can't help but be delighted. So Max Verstappen takes the victory as predictably, followed by Sergio Perez and also Carlos Sainz. It's a Red Bull 1-2 and Red Bull kick off their campaign for a second championship. Meanwhile, for us, a very good result, um, considering the fact that, you know, I mean, realistically, we had some bad luck if it wasn't for that DRS fault. And realistically, if we didn't, um, if we didn't get jumped by Landon Norris, we could have been on for a P9, maybe even a P8 if a safety car would have came out. But you know what? I'm not going to complain. I'm sure Gene Haas and Gunter Steiner are very, very happy um, with my points finish. And hopefully, uh, Gunter Steiner is not calling me a wanker or a knobhead because I scored and his Viking boy didn't. That was a very fun race, especially in towards the second half of the race, battling with Oscar Piastri and also Alexander Albon as well, going free wide multiple times in this race. That was very, uh, very fun. But that's that for the second episode of this F123 Drive Career Mode. Has to glory. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe as well for all things F123 related. I should have another video coming out tomorrow when the game, when the normal game comes out, and hopefully we can go from there. But that's that for this video. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more F123 content. I'm trying to get 700 subscribers now, but yeah, the support's been massive. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully, we can have a good year on this game. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video in a bit.